Hello boys and girls a very good evening and welcome to this live discussion on simplifications for your upcoming IBPS PO preliminary examination i hope all of you are in good health and so is your preparation for this highly competitive exam i see many of you have joined the chat already good to see that uh, and uh, like you all know we have already released a 50 day study plan for the IBPS PO exam which is available on all our social media handles you can just subscribe to our channel download the 50 day study plan which comes with not just a plan for 50 day preparation but also links to videos on each of those topics listed there that you can watch and you know get ready for uh, this exam okay so today uh, is one live discussion that we are doing on a very important topic of simplifications we had covered syllogisms yesterday if you remember and uh, this topic from the section of quantitative aptitude again carries a high weightage you all know that it usually uh, has about five to ten marks of weightage in the quant section so very very important and we are doing this based on the feedback that we received from uh, our subscribers so i would strongly advise all of you to kind of keep posting your requirements through the comments on what kind of questions or topics you want us to cover and we will deliver it through these kind of live classes in addition to the standard 50 day uh, study plan that we have right so let's get started thank you all for your wishes on the teachers day wish you a happy teachers day uh, to you guys as well because i truly believe that all my students have played a key role in me being a, a teacher right the kind of questions that you ask and the uh, the the kind of uh, uh, response that you give really is motivating and encouraging so thank you all for being a part of our journey and uh, happy teachers day I, I would be glad if you guys just uh, do really well in your exams prepare wholeheartedly and get back to us with your wonderful results so let's get started uh, i will share my screen now and present the first question to you all these are uh, again not very complex questions but many of us end up wasting a lot of time by doing a lot of unnecessary paperwork or you know things like that so I'll, I'll pose the question to you quickly give you a few seconds to solve and then discuss the solution so here we go the first question is on your screens now look at what it says uh, what value will come in place of question mark in the following questions right so basically simplification based questions you have to identify what comes in place of question mark what do we have here simple four or three digit numbers with additions and subtractions right 1456 plus 3271 plus 441 minus 3562 plus 8895 minus 7624. Now what I would do uh, before solving this question is look at the options. So my observation is all the options are ending in 7, right? So the technique unit digit method is not applicable here, right? Because every answer here ends with 7. I will not be able to uh, find out the correct answer based on that method. So I'll have to try something else. I, I would not want to do the actual solution. Now what I can maybe do is uh, check for the last two digits because if you see the 10th digit in every option is different. We have got 37 here, we have 47, 97, 87 and 77. So why not just play with the last two digits. So instead of worried about you know working on 1456 plus 3271 plus 441 plus 3562 plus 1895 plus minus 7625 I'll only look at the last two digits and based on that I'll try to find out what could be the resulting answer so try that see if it works so i've got 56 56 plus 71 will be 127 127 plus 41 is 168 168 minus 62 right take care of the uh, sign there right 168 minus 62 will be 106 106 plus 95 106 plus 95 is 201 and 201 minus 24 now understand last we were working on last two digits but we ended up having a three digit number right 201 201 minus 24. 201 minus 24 gives you what? 200 minus 24 is 176. 201 minus 24 will be 177. So my last three digits come out to be 177. So of course, one will get carried forward to the hundreds place, right? But I'm left with 77. So can I say the answer will be 2877? Yes, option E will be the answer to this question. So what is important to be noted here is that you don't really have to work on all the four digits or all the three digits there, right? You can simply take the last two digits and try to find out the right answer given all the options have got different last two digits right if the tens places are also same in more than two or more than three options then it, it may not be a very useful method so smart way of solving this question 
well there are other ways as well i mean if i have to talk about something else uh, what i can think of is uh, uh, i i would not do an approximate calculation here approximation is an interesting method again but i would not dare to apply that method here because options are too close right 2237 2347 i, I mean maybe i'll still do it but it's risky because they're not very spaced out right difference of 90 100 and so on so maybe approximation is not the best way you can try the try the method of uh, root digit the digital root method we have discussed about this method in our other videos please refer to those videos which are uh, which is available on our youtube channel but root digit method is something that we can try yeah you want to try that as well let's let's see let's let's try and apply that answer is this we have got it without putting too much of effort root digit of course will be a longer process but good to learn and good to see if it uh, works here right so let's see so what, I, what i'm going to do now is apply root digit method to the same question see what happens now now assuming all of you know what root digit or digital root is right like for example i mean if you don't know about it please watch the basic videos that we have on our youtube channel on root digit method let me directly apply it here so 1456 what is the root digit for 1456 you know what is root digit you keep adding the digits of a number till you arrive at a single digit number right so 1 plus 4 5 5 plus 5 10 10 plus 6 16 1 plus 16 so 16 results in what again 16 is a two digit number so 1 plus 6 7 so root digit of this number is 7 you understand for example it's a random number is 2 3 5 9 8 4 6 3 2 1 what is the root digit of this number 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 5 10 plus 9 19 plus 8 27 plus 4 31 plus 6 37 plus 3 40 plus 2 42 plus 3 plus 1 43 43 4 plus 3 7 so root digit is 7 you know that lucky digit some people understand this as lucky digit so that's what is root digit a smarter way of identifying root digit is you can always neglect nines anything that is making nine like nine can be avoided here you know 5 plus 4 is 9 forget about that 6 plus 3 is 9 forget about that 8 plus 1 is 9 forget about that and just add the remaining digits 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 2 7 you get the same root digit yeah so let's identify the root digits first 3 2 7 1 what will be the root digit it will be 4 because 7 plus 2 is 9 3 plus 1 4 441 the root digit is 9 3 5 6 2 the root digit will be 7 again right because 3 and 6 makes 9 5 plus 2 7 and then 8 8 9 5 i'll forget about 9 8 plus 8 16 plus 5 21 2 plus 1 is 3 and 7, 6, 2, 4, I think 7 and 2 is 9, forget about that. 6 plus 4, 10. 10 will give you 1, root digit 1. Now try to find out the overall root digit of the left hand side. So we have 7 plus 4 plus 9 minus 7 plus 3 minus 1. So 7 plus, okay, 7 and minus 7 gets cancelled. 4 plus 9 is 13, 13 plus 3 is 16, 16 minus 1 is 15. 15 and again 15 can be taken as 1 plus 5, 6. So my root digit of the left hand side is 6. If the root digit on the left hand side is 6, the root digit on the right hand side should also be 6. So whatever comes in place of question mark, that should have a digital root or a root digit of 6. Check with the options. The only risk we run here is, if multiple options give you a root digit of 6, you will not be able to identify the answer. Let's let's take a chance. Let's see. We, we are trying to learn the method. Uh, we know the better way of solving the question is just work on the last two digits. But if in case you apply root digit method, what happens? So which option gives you 6? 2 plus 2... Okay, so this is anyway cancelled. 2 and 7 makes 9. So 2 plus 3, 5. Root digit is 5. I am looking for 6. Option A is eliminated. This is giving 7. Option B is also eliminated. This gives you 5. Option C is also eliminated, right? Root digit is 5 here. This gives you what? Uh, 6 plus 8, 14. 14 is 1 plus 4, 5. This also is eliminated. So option E has to be the answer. Why? Option 1, 2, 3, 4 are giving me a root digit which is different than what I need here. Check option E. Uh, 8 plus 7 is 15, 1 plus 5 is 6. Yes. Does it match? Yes, it does. So option E is the answer. Option E is the answer. Now, this tells you the power of that root digit method, right? Very, very interesting. But there are limitations. What are the limitations? Number one, it kind of gets time consuming. I mean, you know, the amount of time that we have spent here is definitely more than working on the last two digits. Yeah. But if the last two digits are not working, I would have probably tried it. So that's number one limitation. It is time consuming. Number two, if multiple options give you the same root digit, then you'll not be able to figure out what the correct answer is. Like I would say, we were lucky here that answer requirement was root digit six. If instead of six, it is five, then we'll be confused because A, C and D, all the three options give you root digit five. So we were lucky that five was not the requirement. Six was the requirement, right? And the third limitation I would say is uh, 
it is not applicable for divisions it is applicable for additions subtractions and multiplications but not for divisions it can be spinned in a way that you can apply it in divisions as well but directly you cannot apply a root zero and division you are able to follow so that's a technique and i think you should learn this you should master this technique very very helpful in in a few special cases let me move on and present the next question to you right the next question is on your screens here see what it is here we go 14 into question mark into 14 equals to 62 square plus 2232 find out what comes in place of question mark now when i look at the options i will i mean i told you the first step is to look at the options that will tell you what method can be applied so i have one one four five two so i think most of the options have a different unit digit right so i can apply the unit digit method this time i would like to apply the unit digit method the only risk in applying unit digit method is in case we find out that the last digit should be one in case we find out that last digit has to be one then we will you know get confused between a and b because both a and b are ending in one c d e are ending in four five two so that's the only risk if the last digit comes out to be one we are screwed otherwise we know the answer let's let's take that risk find out look at this a number ends in two its square will end with what two 62 square will give you a four digit number right now when one number is ending in two its square also will end with its square will end with what four like two square is four 12 square is 144 24 square is whatever right so it I mean, it whatever meaning it ends in four right 24 square you all know is uh, how much uh, 570 no, sorry, not 24, 22 square. 22 square is 484, right? 2 square is 4. 12 square is 144. 24 square, no, I am going to 24. 22 square is one, uh, 484. So you see, whenever number ends in 2, its square ends in 4, right? So 62 square will end with 4. It will be a 4-digit number. I am not worried about what the other digits are. I only want to see the last digit. Plus, 2232, two, the number ends in 2. So when one number ends in 4 and the other number ends in 2, their sum plus right in between, their sum will end with what? 6. 4 plus 2, 6. Yes or no? So I am sure that the left, hand, the, the left hand side ends in 6. If the left, left hand side ends in 6, the right hand side also should end with 6. Right? Very, very simple. If the left hand side is ending in 6, sorry, the right hand side is ending in 6, the left hand side should also end with 6. Now look at what we have on the left hand side. We have got 14 into some question mark into 14 equals to we know that the answer should end with 6. The problem here is this. 14 into 14 itself is ending in 6. You know, 14 into 14 is 196. That is a number ending in 6. Some number ending in 6. Or let's say 196. Right? 196 into question mark. Now, this is the problem, right? A number which ends with 6. You multiply with any number. It will always give you a number that ends in 6 only. Or not really. Let's check. I mean, I, I, what I meant was a uh, square of a uh, number ending in 6 will always end with 6, not this. But yeah, let's see what can come in place of question mark. For example, if you put 31 in place of question mark. So what happens? This number ends in 6, 196 ends in 6, 31 ends in 1, 6 into 1 ends in 6. Yes, possible answer. But then 41 also ends with 1. You're able to follow. Only multiply this 6 with the last digits of these options and see which option gives you 6. So 6 into 1 is 6 satisfies 6 into 1 again 6 option b also satisfies 6 into 4 6 into 4 will end with 4 6 4 are 24 right the answer will end with 4 but i want the answer to end with 6 so option c is eliminated 6 into 5 30 answer will end with 0 but i want the answer to end with 6 option d is eliminated 6 into 2 12 ends with 2 i want the answer to end with 6 eliminated now this is the problem the fear that we had has become real what was the fear we had Ki if the answer ends in 1 then we have two options satisfying that. So what do we do? Is this not the best way to solve the question? Well, I would say it still is the best way to solve the question because three options have got eliminated. We have to decide between 31 and 41. What do you do 31 and 41? Root digit. We learned the root digit method. Now having spent so much time, and by the way, it won't take as much time as I've taken to explain it here, right? I'm explaining it so it's taking longer. When you do it yourself, it will happen rapidly in your brain. Okay. So now the only thing I'll have to do is maybe quickly work on root digit method and see whether 31 satisfies or 41 satisfies. Now I am very confident of applying root digit method here because the root digit of 31 is 4 and the root digit of 41 is 5. 3 plus 1, 4. 4 plus 1, 5. So definitely I will be able to identify what the root digit is. 
Yes or no? Let's try to digit that. Okay, so I'm clearing it off. I am clearing this solution that we have done. We know that C, D, E cannot be the answer. Answer should be 31 or 41. Now, some of you may say, instead of doing all this drama, I am better off doing the actual calculation. You can do that. Nobody is stopping you. But we are looking at what are the better ways of arriving at the answer, right? Better and faster ways of arriving at the same answer. Yeah. So, try that now. Root digit. How do you do root digit? See, 62. So, this is like this, right? 62 into 62 plus 2, 2, 3, 2. 62 root digit is 8. 8. So 8 into 8, 64. 64 meaning 6 plus 4, 10 and 1 plus 0, 1. So root digit of this is 1. Now some of you may not be able to follow what I'm doing here. That will be the case with those who have not, who do not know the concept of root digit. If you know the concept of root digit, whatever I'm doing makes a lot of sense, right? 62's root digit is 8. 8 into 8 is 64. 64's root digit will be 1 because 6 plus 4 is 10 and 1 plus 0 is 1. What is the root digit of 2, 2, 3, 2? 2 plus 2, 4. 4 plus 3, 7. 7 plus 2, 9. 9. Now, what do we have? 1 plus 9. 1 plus 9 is 10. What is the root digit for 10? 1. 10, right? 10. What do you do? Add these two digits. We will give you 1. Root digit means keep adding the digits of the number till you arrive at a single digit number. So now I am sure that the root digit of the left hand, right hand side is 1. So root digit of left hand side should also be 1. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Now 1 plus 4, 5, root digit is 5. This 1 plus 4, root digit is 5. And we have question mark. So now the question boils down to this. 5 into question mark into 5 is equal to 1. Now first do this. 5 into 5, 25. What is the root digit of 25? 2 plus 5, 7. So now this becomes 7, root digit 7 into question mark equals to 1. Now check this. What is the root digit of 31? 4. What is the root digit of 41? 5. Now, if you put 4 in place of question mark, 7 into 4, 28. Yes or no? If you put 4 in place of question mark here, what do we get? 7 into 4, 28. What is the root digit of 28? 2 plus 8, 10. 1 plus 0, 1. Yes, satisfies. So that can be taken as the answer. Option 1 can be taken as the answer. Option B will not satisfy. In case you put option B, 5 here, what happens? 7 into 5, 35. What is the root digit of 35? 8. But do I want 8? No, I want 1. It doesn't satisfy. So option B is eliminated. Option A satisfies. So option A, 31 is the answer. Please do not look at the amount of time that we have spent in solving this one. Because if you consider that, then you will be like, Sabakwas, itna kon karega exam mein. Right. You don't have so much time in the exam. But you won't take so much time in the exam. If you know the method, if you know these techniques, and you have practiced enough, it will be done in a jiffy. Yeah. You can do the regular solution also, right? 14 into 14 is 196, 62 square. What is 62 square? 50 plus 12, right? So 2500 plus 1200 plus 144. 3844 is 62 square. 3844 plus 2232. Add, then divide by 196. See if that is giving you the answer fast. Yeah. If it's up to you, whichever method gives you the answer in the least time, that's the best method for you. What is best for me need not be best for you. What is working for you may not work for everybody else. So identify what is what is that you are comfortable with. Which method are you comfortable with and apply that. Next question. Now this is definitely a simpler one. Percentages. 40% of 440 plus what percent of 270 is 338. Now it all depends on your numerical skills. Every question on simplification is on numbers, right? You should be very quick with numbers. Try this. 40% of 440 plus what percentage of 270 is equal to 338. Look at the options. See, what, what do we have to find out? What comes in place of question mark, right? These are all options. 50%, 105%, 45%, 60%, 90%. And I would first apply approximation method here. Approximation. Why would I do approximation? Because options are spaced out. There's so much of difference in these options here, right? 50 and 105 is double. Of course, 50 and 45 are close. That way, 60 and 50 are also close. But other options are like spaced out, right? So... What I would uh, do is first approximately identify what can be the answer. What can be the range? See, approximation method may not give you the... I mean, it will not give you the answer. But it will at least give you the range. For example, if I figure out that the answer should be closer to let's say 10%. Look at the options. Only one option will be there which is like close to 10%. Mark that as the answer. 
see whether you find the exact answer or you do a rough calculation, approximate calculation and then mark the correct answer, you're going to get the same mark. You'll get one mark. So why waste our time in doing the entire calculation? Why do you want to boil the ocean for doing something which doesn't need that, right? So, so let's look at this. What will I do? I know that 40% of 440 will be somewhere around or actually I know that exact value is 176. It's, it's a very, very simple calculation, right? 10% is 44. 40% 40 will be 44 into 4. So 160 plus 16, 176. 176 plus what will give you 338? 176 plus, I mean, if you take approximately as 180, I'll have to add another 140 or something. So 180 plus, not even 140, 160. 180 plus 160, this is roughly 180. I'll have to add, let's say, approximately 160. So 176 plus 160 will give me somewhere around 338. Yes or no? Yes. So 160. Now look at this. 160 is can be what percentage of 270? Can it be 105 percentage? No. Can it be 90 percentage? No. What is 50 percentage of 270? 50 percentage of 270 itself is 135. So 160 should be more than 50 percentage, right? Answer should be more than 50 percentage. That's it. Option D is the answer. Why should I work and waste my time? I don't know what the right answer is, but I know that these four are wrong. You're getting it. You may not know what the correct answer is, but if you know which four are wrong, that works for you, right? I know 105 cannot be the answer. I know 90 cannot be the answer. I know 50 or less than 50 cannot be the answer because 50 percentage of 270 is 135. 135 plus 176 is 301 or 311. I want 338. I want more. So answer should be more than 50 percentage. The only option which is more than 50 percentage is 60 there and that's your answer. So anybody who's actually done the calculation, 60% of 270, 135 plus 27, 162 plus 176, then equals to 338 has wasted his time. You've got the right answer, but you wasted your time. Yes, so smartless lies in identifying the right option without actually doing the full calculation, the whole calculation, right? I am not saying it works in every question, but wherever it works, that's the best way of doing it. Now, how to identify where it works? Practice, practice, and more practice. Yep. Shall we move on? Next question. Let me present the next question to you. Here we go. Try this. It's very easy to do. This will be 8091. If you are thinking, I have you know already looked at this question before coming to the class, and I know the answer by heart, and then I'm just writing it there you're wrong trust me i'm seeing this question only now right i'm not trying to boast about my numerical skills but all i'm saying is if i can do it you also can do that you know what you are looking at it as 87 into 93 but i am looking at it as 90 minus 3 into 90 plus 3 yes or no 87 is 90 minus 3 oh, so that is 97 and 83 anyway so 97 and 83 then it will be what 90 plus 7 90 minus 7 Maybe I, I took it plus 3 minus 3, but then the idea is the same. You are taking it as 97, 83. No, I am saying it is 90 plus 7 and 90 minus 7. 90 plus 7, 97. 90 minus 7, 83. So answer should be 90 plus 7 into 90 minus 7. Is it not sounding very familiar? A plus B into A minus B. A squared minus B squared. So 90 squared minus 7 squared. 90 squared is 8100. 7 squared is 49. 8100 minus 49 will be 8051. I wrote 8091 earlier, I was wrong, 8051. But the technique is right, what I had assumed was correct. It is in the form of A plus B into A minus C. 21 into 9, is it hard to solve 21 into 9? No, 20 into 9, 1 into 9. So 180 plus 9, 189. This is 189. We have a plus in between. And the last part of it, 47 into 43. Don't take it as 47 into 43. It is 45 plus 2, 45 minus 2. Are you getting it? It is 45 plus 2, 45 minus 2. Same, A plus B into A minus B. So 45 square minus 2 square. 45 square, 2025. I don't have to tell you how to multiply 45 with 45. We have learned this technique, right? Finding out squares of numbers ending with 5 is like a... Is like, is like your name. You know it. Yeah? What's your name? Rohit. What is 45 square? 2025. What is 65 square? 4225. I, I have not learned it by heart. It's a technique. You have mastered it already. If you have not mastered it already, please go back and uh, uh, refer to our videos. Yeah. So what do we do here? We simply take 45 plus 2, 45 minus 2. 45 square is 2025. 
and minus 2 square 4 so that will be 2 0 2 1 that's it I know the three numbers on the left hand side 8051 189 and minus 2021 of course if you had looked at the options you will know that unit space method will not work because all the options are ending in 9 yeah you may either want to work with two digits 51 89 and 21 yeah do that simple 51 plus 89 so what are the two two digits we have 51 89 21 this is with plus this is with minus i'll first do the subtraction it's easy 51 minus 21 is 30 30 plus 89 what is 30 plus 89 you're getting it 30 plus 89 what is 30 plus 89 190 yes or no 30 plus 89 is 190 so i know that the last two digits should be 19 because this one will get carried forward to the 100 space a last two digits should be 19 wrong 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 and wrong so right 6219 should be the answer. Or doing the whole full edition also would not take much time. But why? When the last two digits can give me the answer, why should I work on the whole sum, whole problem? So what we have learned here is that you know, see the, the point I'm trying to make is you should know these simple techniques which can make such complex problems simpler. If you break it into you know slice and dice the problem, right? There are three pieces. 97 into 83, 8051. How? A plus B into A minus B format. 21 into 9 is chiller, we all know that. 47 into 43, again A plus B into A minus B format. Or maybe take 47 as 50 minus 3. Whichever works for you. You know those three numbers, club them, you'll get the answer. Yeah? Now, while, while the root digit method may work here, I would not prefer it. Why? You can do this in 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds. Yeah? Try root digit method. I mean, may give you the right answer by that method as well. But I, I am like, if nothing else is working, then try root digit method. Don't directly jump into it. It, it is interesting. It is, it, it appears magical, but it is not that magical when it comes to time consumption, right? So, not the preferred way of doing it. Next question. Try this. 1 3 by 13 plus 2 18 by 52 plus 5 7 by 65 minus 4 6 by 13 equals to what? Now a question involving fractions. You know what's the smart way of doing it? Don't look at it as fractions. Break it. Break it into two parts. Right? The question should be split into two parts. Fractions and integers. So how do you do it? Instead of taking it as 1 3 by 13, I'll say it is 1 plus 3 by 13 plus 2 plus 18 by 52 plus 5 plus 7 by 65 minus 4 minus 6 by 13 because 1 plus 3 by 13 is 1 3 by 30 2 plus 18 by 50 is 2 is 2 18 by 52 5 7 by 65 4 6 by, and now don't say 4 plus 6 by 13 there's a minus sign it is it will be applicable to the integer as well as to the fraction right so minus 4 minus 6 by 30 now you know what smart people do what smart guys do they will not deal with fractions at all they'll first deal with integers to see if they are able to get a range right so 1 plus 2 plus 5 so 1 plus 2 3 3 plus 5 8 8 minus 4 is 4 so 4 plus there's some integers involved uh, there's some fractions involved integers calculation has given me 4 1 plus 2 3 3 plus 5 8 8 minus 4 is 4 there are fractions involved now i'll, I'll not worry about the fractions immediately let, let me look at the options now right let me look at the options so it should be 4 plus something it should be 4 plus something yeah or close to 4 it can be minus also be careful sometimes it can be minus also because if you see the fractions 3 by 13 is like you know 0 0.25 18 by 52 is like 0 0.33 7 by 65 is like 0 0.1 6 by 30 is like 0 0.5 so the the estimate that you may have to make is make is will the fractions calculation give you uh, uh give you plus one i mean plus something or minus something so i'm of the view that i'll anyway get a positive sum of fractions right 3 3 by 30 3 by 13 is like 1 fourth right so it's like 0 0.25 18 by 52 is like 1 third so it's like 0 0.3 0 0.25 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.5 you know 0 0.55 6 by 13 is also minus 0 0.5 so even if these two cancel each other i'll be left with something 7 by 65 so i am hoping that it will be a positive value yes or no it will be more than four so if it has to be more than four you can see three options get eliminated it could be 429 by 130 or 429 by 260. Yeah. I'm assuming it should be option D. 
but in this case if you don't want to take a chance if you're not very comfortable do the calculation how will it look like 3 by 13 here also i'll multiply both numerator and denominator by 5 so 3 in, uh, 6 into 5 30 13 into 5 65 why did i do this because then three denominators will become 65 right so 15 by 65 7 by 65 30 by 65 so 15 plus 7 uh, 22 22 minus 30 is minus 8 so basically we have 18 by 52 minus 8 by 65 you're getting it you're able to follow we are try to convert all the denominators to 65 maybe we can take a common multiple also now eventually i'm left with that only we'll have to do a common multiple of 65 and 52 uh yeah but then i can i can sense that 18 by 52 see if it is 18 by 50 it will be one third it is approximately one third right it's like one by three approximately very close to one by three so this is like 0.33 minus what is 8 by 65 it's like are we sure about this calculation yes right 15 by 65 30 oh did i multiply uh, yeah 7 by 65 and this is 30 by 65 so 15 plus 7 22 22 minus 30 minus 8 yeah what is minus 8 by 65 if you see it's like 8 by 64 right assume 65 is not 65 it's 64 so it is 8 into 1 8 into 8 1 by 8 1 by 8 what is 1 8 1 8 is 0.125 oh so looks like it is close to 0.2 it's close to point to them yeah that's why i didn't want to take a chance you're able to follow my decimal part is coming out to be 0.33 minus 0.13 let's say so 0.2 now this is 0.2 so i would mark option c as the answer all right i hope you guys are able to follow are you are you clear with it so the idea is work on integers separately work on fractions separately and see of course sometimes you find it to be very close like in this case so play it carefully right don't be in a hurry 0 0.1 0 0.1 4.1 versus 4.2 is very close so you have to be careful so i think it will be 29 by 130 not 29 by 260 because 29 by 260 is almost one tenth right 0 0.1 29 by 130 is point 0.1 it's like 1 by 5 so somewhere around point 0.2 right let me move on next question here's the next one Oh, all negative answers. <laughs> Let's see. So, cube root of 32,768 plus 25 into 26 minus 5% of 1120 minus 101 into 31. Do this. Uh, obviously, when you look at the options, you know that it's going to be negative, right? I mean, answer is negative. Why? Because all the options are negative, obviously. So, there's no smartness there. 25 into 26 for me becomes 25 into 25 plus 1. All this happens in my brain mentally, you know, rapidly. And I'm sure it will happen in your brain as well if you practice. So 25 square is 625 plus 25 into 1 is 25. 625 plus 25 is 650. You're getting it. I'm sure many of you must have understood this already. But, you know, do it quick. 25 into 25 is 625 plus, uh, plus uh, you know, another 25. So 625 plus 25 is 650. Now, 5% of 1120 should be very easy to do. 10% of 1120 is 112. 5% will be half of that. Half of 112 is 56. So this is minus 56. Are you getting it? 10% of 1120 is 112. I want 5%. 5% 5 is half of 10%, right? So half of 112 is 56. Minus comes the next part. What is it? 101 into 31. Easy or difficult? Very easy. How much will it be? See, 101 is not 101. It is 100 plus 1. So 31 into 100, 3100. Plus 31 into 1, 31. So 3000. 131 so this will be 3131 now comes the first part cube root of 32768 do i have to explain this to you no right cube root of this number 32768 should be easy to crack how we have learned this finding out cube root is like is like again very very easy how do you do this what do you think will be the cube root of 32768 it's a simple two-step process look at the last digit eight when a number end in, ends in 8, its cube root will end in what? 2. Forget about the last three digits, 768, 32. What is the highest cube less than 32? The highest cube less than 32 is 8. Yes or no? Or oh, 27. Sorry. 3 cube is 27. So the answer should be 32. Right? So you know the number also. Now do the calculation. 
going back to the screen to explain this to you, right? This number ends in 8. When the number ends in 8, its cube root will end with 2. Forget about the last three digits. 32. Highest cube less than 32 is 3. I mean, 27 is the highest cube less than 32. 27. 27 is 3 cube. So 32. That's it. This is the simplified form of the given question. 32 plus 650 minus 56 minus 3131. Now, if you look at it roughly, 3100 minus 650 is around 2500. Answer should be around 2500. Answer should be around 2500. So immediately A, C, and E are eliminated. It is either 2555 or 2505. Now, since 2555 and 505 are closed, you better do a proper calculation. How do you do it? See, 3131 and 56. Add these numbers will be what? 3187. Right? Minus. And this is what? 650 plus 32 is uh, 682. Simplify now. So basically 3187 minus 682. 3100 minus 600 is 2500. 87 minus 82 is 5. So 2505. Option D will be the answer. Don't put pen on paper now. Don't try to do this. 3187 minus 682. 5, 7 minus 25. 8 minus 80. 31 minus 625. If you are doing this, I'm sorry. You're not the smartest guy taking the exam. What would you do? Do it mentally. 3100 minus 600 is 2500 87 minus 82 is 5 that's it you know the answer 2505 with a negative sign of course yes all right so that's the answer uh, to this question 2505 or rather minus uh, 2505 okay shall we move on i think i have one or two more questions one, one more question, one more question before you close. Here we go. Next question, quickly. Simplification, 1575 divided by 75 plus 22 square minus 11 cube equals to question mark plus 25 plus 676. Just play with those numbers. 15, so you know the bottom rule, right? First do the division. 1575 divided by 75 will be how much? It will be 201. Sorry, it will be 21, right? 75 into 10 is 750. 75 into 20 is 1500. Plus another 575 will be divisible one times. So this will be 21. You're getting it? Don't try to do this, Baba, please. If you are doing this, I'm really worried. So 75 into 2 is 150. Then 7 remains. Then 5 you bring down. Then 75 into 1 is 75. Then 0. Hence 21 is the answer. This is crap. With all due respect to the method, we have learned this in school, but it's not to be applied in your competitive exam. Change the way you're looking at number, right? 1575 by 75. This is how you should visualize it. 1575 by 75 is equal to 1500 plus 75 by 75. Why 1500 plus 75 by 75? Because I know that 1500 goes 20 times. 1500 into, two, I mean 75 into 20 is 1500. 75 into 1 is 75. So 20 plus 1, 21 will be the answer. Why do I do anything else? And you don't even have to write this on paper, right? Cut the pap paperwork. No need to put pen on paper. So this is 21. What is 22 square? 484. What is 11 cube? 1331. You're supposed to know this by heart, right? Don't ask me how you found 11 cube. I know 11 cube is 1331. I've learned it by heart. It's like 2 square, 4. 11 cube, 1331. You should know that. Up to 10 is enough. Up to 10 or 11, 12 is enough. Up to 15 cubes is, is more than enough. Don't worry. Don't, don't think that you have to learn all the cubes by heart. Don't try to learn 16 cube by heart, please. 16 cube by heart. Is a waste of time. You don't know what is 16 cube. You ask me, what is 16 cube in 16 cube? I don't know. Yeah, I actually don't know. Honestly, sometimes I wonder about 15 cubes. I mean, I don't know what is 15 cube. I, I, I probably do something when I look at the numbers there. Yeah. So this business of learning by heart doesn't really work in my view, right? So much of load that you have to carry. And the worst part is, you know, when you are in a competition, when you are working under pressure, you, you tend to forget. At the right time, you will forget that. Are you 3757 or 3767? You know, these kind of doubts I get. So I don't depend on that at all. Yeah. But 11 cube, okay. 1331, I know. I mean, 10 cube is 1000, 11 cube is 1331. You know it by heart. So what is the left hand side? Let, let's work on the unit digit. I think all the. Okay, but there's a negative sign involved, so you have to be careful. You have to be careful. What comes in place of question mark? Okay. Let's, let's solve this. So what is square root of 676? 26. This you know. Plus 25. Plus question mark. So this is the question now. 21 plus 484 minus 1331 is equal to what plus 25 plus? This is like 51. 
25 and 26 is 31, right? So I would immediately look at it this way. Don't write it on paper. I'm writing it on paper to explain you what the step is. But it is like this 21 plus 484 minus 1331 minus 51. That 51 goes on the other side, right? Plus 51 becomes minus 51. Obviously, the answer would be negative, right? Answer would be negative. Simplify this now. So 484 plus 21 is how much? 505? 480 plus 2, 480 plus 2500, 4 plus 1, 5, 5 not 5. That's it. Now, look at this. I'll, I'll tell you how to keep it simple. Think of the unit digit, right? I mean, all the unit digits are different, right? Think of it. So, for the moment, for, for a moment, assume that this is negative and these are positive numbers. So, 1331 plus 51 is like 1382. 82 minus 5 is 7. Answer should end with 7. You're getting it? See, if you directly apply unit digit method, you may get you may get confused, right? 5 minus 1 is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. Answer should end with 3, and no option is ending with 3. Don't get confused because this is giving you a negative result, right? So you have to be doing it carefully. This is 505 minus 1331 minus 51. So for the sake of simplicity, forget about all these negative signs. But when you forget about all these negative signs, you should turn these negative signs to positive and they should become negative. So now what happens is 1 plus 1, 2. 2 minus 5, 2 minus 5 will give you, it's like, you know, then you will borrow 1, right? So 2 becomes 12, 12 minus 5 is 7, answer should end in 7, only one option ends in 7. Yeah, option A. Quickly the last one, wow. This is the last question, let's see. Interesting, right? I know, you can see the, you can't see the question now, but I'm reading it out. 37,392 divided by 62,559 into 23,832 divided by 86,184 equals to what? You know what's the best way to answer this question? Over. The session is over. Don't solve this. If I'm in the exam, I'll not solve it. What will you do? Five digit numbers. Four five digit numbers involves divisions. Crazy. It, it's going to take a lot of time. So no, let, let me show the question again to you. So if I'm like taking the exam, I would skip it in the first instance. I, I'll not touch this. Can you can you look at it? Thirty seven thousand three ninety two divided by sixty two thousand five fifty nine into twenty three thousand eight thirty two divided by eighty six thousand one eighty four equals to what? This is what is asking us to do. Skip. Shortcut. Skip is the shortcut. Skip it. That's it. You have earned more marks by not solving this question. Let me tell you. You have, earned, oh, you have earned more marks. You have got more marks by not solving this question. If you solve this question, you will lose your marks. You might wonder how will you lose your marks. I mean, you will solve this. You will get that one mark. But you would have spent at least three minutes to get that one mark. At least three minutes to get that one mark. And if you had not solved it, in those three minutes, you could have done maybe three questions. Yes or no? So solving it gives you one mark. Not solving it may give you three marks. You decide. Very easy. Skip. That's the best way to solve it. But then you can try something. Skip it. In my view, I would still subscribe to the idea that you should skip this. Go to the next question. I mean, I don't have a next question, but in the exam, go to the next one, right? But let's say, let's say you are in a situation where this is the only question now. I have two more minutes left. And this is the only question that I have to solve. Everything else has been solved because you are very smart. You solved all the other questions. Only one question left with two minutes. Then what will you do? Then will you still skip it? No. You would want to try it, right? I mean, jitna ni chodna ni chodlo, right? In that two minutes, if you can get that one mark, nothing like it. Then what will you do in that situation? Will you actually do the calculation? Who's going to multiply this 37,392 with 23,832 or divide by this? No, I, we are not going to do that. So what do you want to do in that case? Maybe try an approximation. But will it help? Do you think it will help? See, the one thing for sure is this is a stupid answer. Option E. Because option E, I mean, I'm looking at the options, I realize this. 23,832 divided by 86,184 is exactly this. How can this be the answer? This this thing has got no value, huh? This thing has got some value, no? It will have some impact on the answer, no? So this is ruled out. Option D, option E is ruled out. So even if you have to make a blind guess, there are only four options, remember. A, B, C, D. Option E is not there for you. Yeah? Now, let's let's try and do an approximation. Approximately, let's see what happens. For example, let's say this is like 
This is like 36,000, 37,000, this is 62,000. Try that, try that. Uh, so 37,400, 37,400, let, let's do a closer approximation. This is 62,600 into 23,840 or 23,800, let's say. Yeah, 86,200. So what I'm trying to do is, instead of dealing with five digit numbers, I'm trying to deal with three digit numbers. Maybe it'll help. So it, it becomes what? 374 by 626 into 238 by 862. Try this. Uh, what? This is, this nothing is kind of easy to eliminate here, right? Maybe I say this is 238 into one. This is 238 into, let's say, somewhere around 3.8, less than 4, approximately 4. Let's say 1 by 4, approximately. I mean, no, I, I know it's not 1 by 4, exactly 1 by 4, but let's say approximately 1 by 4. And this, let's say, is kind of 1 by 2. Actually, it would be more than 1 by 2, but 1 by 2. So it should be somewhere around 1 by 8, approximately. I mean, very, I mean, this is not a very close approximation, by the way. It can still go wrong, but 1 by 8, somewhere around 1 by 8. Maybe try that, 1 by 8. Which option is giving you 1 by 8? Uh, so if you see 644 by 2169 is like 1 by 3, this is like also 1 by 3, 1 third, right? So I'm assuming C and D can be eliminated. I'm assuming C and D can be eliminated. Option A also can be eliminated. Option B to me looks closest. I'll eliminate A, C, D, I'll mark B. Why? Because 656 by 3969 is like almost 1 sixth, right? 1 sixth, 1, point, 1 by 6, somewhere around that, 1 sixth, 1 seventh. This is also somewhere around that only. I mean, 1 by 8 is too far away from the approximation I told you, right? We have done a lot of approximation in this, this simplification. 238 by 862, I should be taking it as 1 by 3.5 something, like 7 by 2 or something like that. Yeah? If you want a better approximation, then you do a better uh, you know, uh, do do a better approximation. What a sentence. If you want a better approximation, you do a better approximation. Doesn't make sense, right? It's like that, you know, if you can't change the girl, change the girl or guy. So, what do we do? Is this the only way of doing it? I'm not sure if B is really the answer. I mean, I, I would, I would, uh, uh, if I have to answer it, maybe I'll mark B. But there are better ways of solving this question. So let me let me show this to you, right? What we can do is try unidigit method. If you're wondering how unidigit method is applicable, let me show it to you. Try, it may work. Otherwise, you'll apply root digit method. We'll see. So what is the unidigit method? We know unidigit method is difficult to apply in division, right? So basically, what do we have? We have 37392. So that's like a number ending in 2 divided by a number ending in 9 into uh, another number ending in 2 divided by a number ending in 4 equals to what? How do you apply unity method? First of all, I mean numerators can be multiplied and denominators can be multiplied. That's a no-brainer. So do that. So when one number ends in 2, the other number also ends in 2, both the numerators, your product will end with 4. Denominators, number ends in 9, the number ends in 4. 9 into, six, 9 into 4, 36. So number would end with 6. Now don't say 2 by 3, okay? The division may it's not applicable. Don't divide 4 and 6 and say it's 2 by 3. So what I know is the value on the left hand side has a numerator that ends in 4 and the value on the right uh, and, and the de and denominator that ends in 6. Yes or no? Numerator ends in 4, denominator ends in 6. By the way, you will not be writing this step in the exam, okay? You should directly look at 2 and 2, write 4, 9 and 4, write 6 here. Equals to question mark. So what will come on the right hand side? How will you try this now? How will you solve this now? Simple, I'll tell you what. Let's put option 1 in place of question mark. What is option 1? 4 by 9. Don't read 724 by 2079. That will make your life miserable. It is 4 by 9. So that's like this. Dot 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 4. Dot dot dot, dot 9. 3 digit number, 4 digit number, doesn't matter. Now, while unit digit method is not applicable on this division, it is not applicable on this division. But if this is really the answer, when I cross multiply, the unit digit method should satisfy? Should, should be applicable. So let's say if you cross multiply, it's, it's like this, right? If I say 2 by 3 is equal to, let's say 16 by 24. Correct, right? 16 by 24 is 2 by 3. This also is 2 by 3. So when I cross multiply, it should give me the rise. It should be equal, right? 24 into 2 is 48. 16 into 3 is 48. Yes or no? 8 and 8. So that's what we're trying to do now. If this really is the answer, see, this is 2 by 3. Unity is 2, 3. Here it is 6, 4. But when I cross multiply, it matches. Unit digit directly may not match. 2 and 6 does not match. 3 and 4 does not match. 
But when I cross multiply, it matches. So that's what we'll do here. So 4 into 9 ends in 6. 4 into 9 ends in 6. 6 into 4 ends in 4. Can this be the answer? No. Option A cannot be the answer. And option E we know is stupid. Anyways. Why is it stupid? Because it's the same part that we have carried or copied here. So option A is eliminated. This was option A eliminated. So gone. Option A is gone. Let's try option B now. Okay. So now I'm going to substitute option B. Substitute option B. What happens? Option B is 6 by 9. I mean, forget about those digits and all that. Only last digit, 6 by 9. 6 in, uh, 4 into 9, 6. 4 9s are 36. 6 6 are also 36. I mean, this number ends in 6. When I cross multiply, left hand side ends with 6, right hand side also ends with 6. So, maybe a possible answer. It's still a maybe. Why is it still a maybe? Because other options may also satisfy. Option B is still a maybe. Let's try option C. So, what happens in option C? Let me try that. Option C. Right, what is option C? Tell me what is option C. Don't say 620 by 2214. It is 0 by 4. This will not be the answer. Why? Because the moment you multiply 6 with 0, this side ends with 0. This side ends with 6. So this is eliminated. Try option D. What is option D? 4 by 9. 4 by 9. 4 into 9, 6. 6 into 4, 4. 6 into 4 is not 4. Don't judge me by that. Okay. 6 into 4 is 24, but ends with 4, right? 4 into 9 ends in 6. 4 9s are 36. Ends with 6. Equals to 6 4s are 24. Ends with 4. Satisfied? No. So option B has to be the answer. I don't even have to apply the... What is that method called? Root digit method. Why? Unit digit gave me the answer. So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is after all this drama, we figured out that unit digit method is actually applicable for this very complex looking question, right? 37392 by 6255982338328384. By the way, you remember our approximation also gave us the same answer, option B. Now I'm trying to boast about my approximation skills, yeah? But it's very important. I mean, I know a lot of you may think why approximation is needed and all that, but if you are good in approximation, you will you will get that sense of range, right? Where the answer could lie. And the best part is you need not do the exact calculation. You, you just go back and refer to that approximation that we had done on this question, right? It was like very loose calculation that we had done. But I could kind of come close and maybe I'm lucky. If there are more options which are closer to whatever 1 by 6, 1 by 8 that we got there, I would get stuck. But I'm lucky. I mean, if I have to say so. You, you, you understand, luck, luck favors those who try hard, right? So if you try really hard and learn and master the technique, you will be able to do it with approximation. So don't assume that only approximation is where you have to do approximation. No, you're wrong. Approximation can be done otherwise also. Judge and find out where the answer could lie. Which option looks like he's the culprit. I mean, this is where I should point my cursor or, you know, do the marking there. Yeah. Huh, but if unit digit doesn't work, then it becomes even more complex. Then what you know, what you will try, you will try root digit method. But root digit method also would take a lot of time. And after trying unit digit method, then root digit method definitely will take. You, you can imagine the amount of time that you must have spent there, right? So, so yeah, I think simplifications is a very important topic. Simplifications and approximations. It it carries five to ten marks of weightage in any bank exam that you go for. In fact, more weightage when you go for clerical exams. But the skill is very, very useful, right? If you can if you can improve your numerical skills, not just these type of questions. You want a question on time and work, time and distance, profit and loss, simple and compound interest would depend on your numerical skills, right? I mean, if you cannot multiply, let's say 63 with 65 uh, without putting pen on paper, something is wrong. 63 to 65 is like 3,600 plus 420 plus 12. No, 63 into 65 is... Uh, 3600 plus 480 plus 30. Are you getting it? I mean, maybe you're not getting it. But then you should, you should try and figure out what I did, right? 63 into 65, right? Either you can take 64 plus 1, 64 minus 1. Or if that sounds complex, 60 plus 3, 60 plus 5. So 16 into 63, 1600. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 into 60 is 480. And 3 into 5 is 15. Yeah. Okay, so I think I've made two errors. I should practice more. That's that's the simple thing, right? You the more you practice, the 
you you reduce your imperfection so basically the idea is this 3600 plus 480 plus 50 or let's try one more let's say if it is it sits, if it is 72 into 75 72 75 is easy 75 can be taken as 3 by 4 into 100 let me not take that 73 into 77 no that also is easy 73 into 78 73 into 78 what do you do 70 plus 3 70 plus 8 so 70 into 70 4900 3 and 8 will make it 11 11 into 70 770 so 4900 plus 770 that's like 5670 and then 3 into 8 24 so 5770 plus 24 5794 is the answer because i'm reading out talking about it it's taking longer when i do it in my own space here without telling anything or without writing anything i'll get the answer faster of course i need to practice because you know last question i made two errors but you should be able to visualize that and then do it without putting that on paper all right so i think my only advice to all of you not the only advice out of the many suggestions the one strong recommendation that i have is spend 30 45 minutes every day 30 to 45 minutes every day in just playing with numbers keep doing it you'll you'll, you'll one day you'll realize that okay and that one day is like in one month's time right within 21 days uh, you will feel that okay yeah i can do this i can do this without putting pen on paper that's when you have arrived that's when quant will start appearing like a easy subject to all of you anyways i think we'll end the session here thank you all for uh, joining us uh, i hope all of you have um, uh, liked this session please keep uh, uh, posting your comments about uh, your, your feedback on the session and more importantly what more you want us to discuss right uh, there are videos available on all the topics that you can think of for bank and comment exams on our youtube channel so you can subscribe to the channel and keep watching those videos but if there are topics where you want us to focus more like simplifications or syllogisms like what we had covered yesterday or anything else just put it in the comments there right and keep practicing practice is the only shortcut the more you practice the easier it gets thank you once again uh, all of you thank you for your teacher's day wishes uh, i've already told you you are a great inspiration and uh, i've learned a lot by teaching uh, you guys right the good questions and the bad questions that you've asked me have only helped me learn more so thank you for being a part of our journey uh, we really appreciate that and keep practicing do take very good care of yourselves i'll see you all in the next session 